day. Today's voiceover talent is more than just a pretty voice. Today's voiceover talent has to be a boss, a VO boss. Set yourself up with business owner strategies and success with your host, Ann Ganguza, along with some of the strongest voices in our industry. Rock your business like a boss, a VO boss. Hey guys, before we get started on today's episode, we want to share some boss solutions and some of the ways you can have more boss in your life. Oh, come on. You can never have too much boss, my little entrepreneurs. <laughs> entrepreneurs. I love that. Did you think of that all by yourself? No, not at all. No, I kind of I kind of borrowed that. We have a fantastic new product for you guys called the Boss Blast. Now, the Boss Blast allows us to send a marketing campaign specifically to a target market audience. It's amazing. And Anne and I have both done it. We've tested it on our selves, of course, of course, because we would never sell you something <laughs> that we couldn't get behind or that we didn't know had uh, merit and efficacy. And this thing is amazing. Custom list. We have up to 90 thousand available opted in contacts around the globe that are basically willing and ready to receive emails from you. And with a boss blast, we can customize it based on industry or geography or a slew of other fun categories. So it's not like you have to worry about being thought of as spam because these people have already opted into this list. This is a great way for you guys to get more clients. Just go to voboss.com, go to the shop tab and click on Boss Blast so you can get your boss on. Okay, now let's get on with today's episode. Welcome to the VO Boss Podcast. I'm your host, Anne Ganguza, along with my lovely co-host, Gabby Nistico. Hey, Gabby, how are ya? Top of the morning to you, lassie. Oh, top of the morning. <laughs> I can't happy, do Irish happy, to save my life. Happy, <laughs> let's just call it Happy St. Patrick's Day. Hey. Yes, it is. It is. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. We all know what color that represents. Our favorite, favorite color, Gabby. Our favorite yes. color. Green. Every boss's favorite color. That's right. Totally. Oh total, my gosh. Love, total love the money green. color. Yeah. Money. Right? Love so, money. <laughs> so in honor of St. Patrick's Day this year, we think it would be fun to talk a little bit about bosses and their relationship with money. With green. And how... <laughs> You know, sometimes it's a very good one, and sometimes it's a not-so-great relationship that people really don't understand, which leads us to the topic of money blocks. Oh, yeah, which I money know, blocks. Yeah, something that you've talked about extensively at different workshops and that uh, I know we're going to probably have a webinar on pretty soon, but we want to kind of get everybody in that mind frame and thinking about money blocks and how to fix them. I couldn't agree with you more. It is so important that we take a look at those things that could be potentially stopping us from receiving money. And it's interesting because sometimes you have money blocks and you don't even know that you have money blocks. That's the thing I think is so fascinating about this, right? Because as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, I feel like the first time I heard this term or concept of money block, I was like, I don't have any money blocks. Why? Exactly. What the hell would I have? A, I want money. Why would I have a block? <laughs> That's so true. And then you realize, oh my gosh, because some of it really is, um, a lot of it's really old. It's like yeah. ingrained in us. It's behaviors that Deep go back seated. to, yeah, like the way yeah. we were raised and our childhoods and how our parents saw money. So help us to dive into that, Anne. Give us some, some. where does it all start? You know, where well, do money blocks begin? I'll tell you what, I, I think the first money block, which is... It's, Sometimes an obvious money block, but you don't know that it's you until you really hear the symptoms of the money block. And I'm going to say the first one is avoidance. Avoidance of talking about money, recognizing money, actually going and looking at your bank account, your credit cards, your retirement, and actually doing an assessment of where am I spending my money? That's the biggest thing. And I know that when I'm in my younger years, that was one of the things that I, you know, just spent my money on those happy credit cards. <laughs> and all of a sudden, it kind of gets away from you. And you go through a period, or at least I did, um, where you just kind of avoid looking at those credit card bills, and they kind of mount up and, and just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And that, that has to stop. <laughs> you have to be able to look at where your expenses are and what you're spending your money on and not avoid looking at the numbers. Because sometimes the numbers can be very painful. And I think that's what people want to avoid. It's very interesting 
interesting. And you're right, because I think the more debt you're in, the more people want to bury their head in the sand and not look at it. Yeah. So I love I love that you're acting like you're like Dr. Ganguza right now. It's like you're a money medic. Doctor. Oh, a money medic. I like that. Money medic, you know, right? And, I love and it's, that. Not just your bank account, your credit cards, retirement as well. And they can also, that whole avoidance thing can, can actually stem, uh, extend outwards to even uh, avoiding making a decision. How many of you out there, uh, mm. I know I was one of them, that, you know, I was in a job that I was stuck at. And I started to, it was one of those things that I'd get up in the morning and I would have that knot in my stomach. And it was starting to really affect my health. And it was, I, I kept thinking, well, if only I could, or I should do this, or I should leave my job. It was avoiding actually addressing the real issues um, in making that decision. Well, it's avoiding change and yeah. nobody likes change. But yeah. sometimes, yeah, it's easy for us to, to do just that, to sweep it under the rug because, oh, I don't want to do that. So what else? What are some of the other things we have to look out for? Well, I, I like that whole that whole guilt and shame thing that we you brought up in the beginning. Mm. I know that as a girl, when I was growing up, that my father was, quote unquote, termed the breadwinner, the breadwinner of the family. Uh, yes. And yes. that is just, it was the unspoken, oh, dad made the money and my mom stayed home and raised the kids. And so my mother had a feeling of maybe not a, a money block, but she, you know, she had her job, but it didn't have an actual income attached to it. And she was always very conscious of my dad's feelings as the breadwinner. Mm. And as I grew up, I thought, oh, and then she, well, as I grew up, she got a part-time job, but she was only working part-time because she didn't want to make more money than my dad. And that kind of put that deep-seated notion in my head that, oh, females can't make more than males or, you know, it will, it will assault his feeling of, you know, the breadwinner. Well, and there's another part to that too. I think for the longest time, women who were homemakers and raising the kids felt beholden to their spouse and that that breadwinning mentality. I mean, I know the two of us, um, we both grew up with, uh, you know, blue collar fathers, yep. shall we say. Mm -hmm. yep. And that was just the role that it's just how it was. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So to, to have a very modern era now where a lot of women do potentially make more than their spouse. And sure. hey, ladies, hello, like this is common in voiceover. A lot of us do make more than our husbands. Yeah. It's okay. But yes, it can be sort of a psychological game that, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. You have to really sit back and think, where did that programming come from? And mm -hmm. recognize Ooh, it for what like it that. is. Yeah. Recognize it for what it is. You know, the other thing too, with that guilt and shame is that whole thought that rich people are greedy or, you know, it's, there's lots of sayings, you know, out there that, um, you know, it's too much possessions, give back, that sort of thing is a bad mm. thing. So there's that, that kind of culture that feels that, you know, uh, rich people are greedy and, the, and that's, you know, all for the rich and none for the poor, that sort of a thing. And I think that that also can kind of creep into your everyday thinking. Now, I I'm going to say, let's just talk about, let's just talk about the, the, the concept of money. If you're rich or you're not rich, that's all subjective, right? I mean, it's a, it's a number. Um, I say totally. if, if you can, if you can be happy and successful doing what you love and make money and pay the bills, um, I think that's fantastic and that you need to open yourself up to that and to not feel bad if you make a lot of money, um, for a particular job or, you know, just in general, because, the money's there and somebody's got to get it, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I think everybody has fair shot. Right. Why shouldn't it be you? Well, Why exactly. shouldn't it be me? Why shouldn't There's it be a, all of us? A river of money flowing and, and there are people taking from it. And why not you? That's that's kind of how I, I feel. And, and you no, know, I think that that's really, really wise. And I think that you're right. What you're talking about is a reframing. It's reframing yeah, the yeah. relationship with money, how you view money. What you said about, um, you know, the idea that uh, wealthy people are greedy. Well, you know, I've known plenty of wealthy people who were, yeah, penny pinching cheapskates. And I've known plenty of wealthy people that were tremendous. Generous. A lot of give billions of dollars to, you know, funds and philanthropy and yeah, totally. exactly. So, so a lot of that, you're right. It really isn't necessarily rooted in fact. I think many of those ideals are rooted in learned behavior 
and things that other people have said. And, you know, it's like anything else. Anything can become a mantra negatively. Yeah. Yeah. So if you grew up in a household where people didn't have the greatest view of the upper class. Sure. There you go. Absolutely. And had resentment or, or, you know, anger Mm -hmm. towards it. Absolutely. Right. Then that will kind of be in the back of that will be implanted in you as well. And also I had Gabby growing up. I had a number. Like when I was first getting out, you know, graduating college and getting out there and and my career, believe it or not, I mean, I hate to say that, but I even had a number in my head that said, okay, I can make this much. And so therefore, (laughs) you know what I mean? I had a number that really stopped me from actually being, accepting more money. So I had a number of what I thought was right for what I should be making um, as I came out of college with that particular degree, with, you know, the, the particular market that I was in. And I think that number was way too low. I don't know if that happened to you. But <laughs> I well, mine, you know, mine was a little different because interestingly, and so now that I think about this, I go, huh, this is a money block that I think I overcame. I just didn't know consciously that I was doing it. So when I got started in this industry and the performing arts, my family was kind of like, wait, you're going to be an actor? Like what? What? And and so having grown up around New York City and you know the suburbs of New York City, everybody's really familiar with the starving artist and the idea of the broke actor. So my family was horrified. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, for the longest time it was the why don't you get a real job? Um, you're never going to make any oh, money yeah. doing this. You're yeah. always going to struggle, right? So for the longest time. That held me down. And that idea that I couldn't make more or that almost it was acceptable to have to be the starving artist. Like I had to fulfill my role, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah. And I'll tell you, my 20s were broke. (laughs) It was a miserable broke experience. (laughs) And again, that 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 uh, thought process can be that can come from your mother, your father. I mean, your spouse. I mean, anybody that's that's supporting you or not supporting you in this industry. Yeah. And I know that that's a real, that is a real issue for some people um, trying to, to garner success in the industry is that the, they're the ones that are, you know, they love it, they're passionate about it, they're working really hard, but yet they have a spouse or a family member that is constantly mm-hmm. knocking them down or trying to just, you know, say to them, well, maybe you could get a real job. I mean, and I think we all had it to some degree. Yeah, truthfully, I don't think I started to really accept my money making potential and to embrace it until I started to look at myself as a business owner and an entrepreneur. That helped to change that significantly. So what are two things that you think, or even just one thing that you think people could do right now today to change their relationship with money and go for the green? Well, first of all, acknowledge if you have a money block, acknowledge what it is, understand it for what it is and and where it came from, because, you know, learned behaviors from the past are can simply stay there in the past. It doesn't mean that you have to continually adopt them today. And, you know, it's a yeah, it's a it's a it's a new it's a new world. Um, (laughs) And you are a business entrepreneur. I think you need to celebrate that and to find joy in receiving money. That's that's really what it is. Find joy. Find it. Make it a game. <laughs> I celebrate. like that. You know, celebrate it. Celebrate. Make it a game and, 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 and make it a challenge for you that you can be happy to accept that money. So first acknowledge where that potential bad thought or negative thought or money block came from. Once you acknowledge it, accept it for what it is it was. And then you can then start to have a new change of thought pattern. And that's that I think is the the best the best recipe for trying to get past that money block. I really, really love the idea of celebrating it. So uh, for those of you who've ever worked in a sales environment or been part of a sales team, and, and if you don't know, sales teams traditionally in in every company, every industry celebrate their wins. They celebrate big accounts. They celebrate big sales. And some places have a bell or they have like a something, something that you can ring literally to celebrate the win. I do that in my office. We have, we have little little desk bells. (laughs) Yeah. And we (laughs) ring the bell because we're so excited when we book something and we're so excited about the money. So we ring the bell twice. The bell gets rung once when you book and it gets rung the second time when you get the check. 
Oh, yeah. nice. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. Ring the bell. Celebrate. Absolutely celebrate. Celebrate that money. Don't feel guilty about it. And, <laughs> you know, actually ask yourself how you can how you can get more of it. That's that's yeah. basically it. I like to always challenge myself, you know. And again, that when I talked before about the number, that number can go way high. It can be something that you're thinking possibly, oh, is that even remotely possible sure it is put the number up there um <laughs> because i think if you set it too low then you know you or you could set it low and then you could overachieve you know mm -hmm. there's a couple of different ways to think about it but for me it worked better to set the higher number because it made me work toward it more i love it yeah. i love it so yeah. bosses yeah don't be afraid of the green embrace it like our irish friends on this great holiday yes. celebrating the green Celebrate Wear the, the green. green. Love the green. Bosses. Kiss mm. the green. <laughs> Good stuff. I'd like to give a shout out to our amazing sponsor, who actually their colors are green, uh, IPDTL. So you guys can ah. also record like a boss by using IPDTL. Check them out at IPDTL.com. Make sure to get in touch with us, like us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Please check out. We put all of our episodes on YouTube so you can watch and you can mm -hmm. listen. Kind of fun, right? And we put good stuff on our website. Good stuff yeah. on our website as well. VOBoss.com where you can find all the different ways that you can put more boss into your life, including special classes, events, and products to help you become an even better entrepreneur who grabs more of the green. Love it. Grab more green, guys. See you next week. Bye. Join us next week for another edition of P.O. Boss with your host, Angan Guza and Gabby Nistico. All rights reserved. Ang Anguza Voice Talent in association with Three Moon Media. Redistribution with permission. Coast to coast connectivity via IPDTL.